Hello everyone and welcome to today's NAAI series webinar. I'm Curtis Kitchen, the Director of Publications and Trade Show for the National Auctioneers Association. I'd like to welcome you and thank you for to joining us today to the newest iSeries installment. iSeries is a free informational webinar series produced by the NAA in order to share auction industry knowledge and insight with NAA members and the general public. We are excited to present today's topic, but before we dive into the highly anticipated session on auction appraisals, we want to share a little more with you about who we are. Headquartered in Overland Park, Kansas, the NAA represents the interest of thousands of auctioneers in the United States, Canada, and across the world. NAA is dedicated to providing its members with educational programming and resources to help them advance themselves as professional auctioneers. Our members are an active, thriving, cutting-edge group who abide by a strict code of ethics and belong to a worldwide network of auction professionals. The NAA exists in order to provide critical resources to auction professionals that will enhance their skills and successes so that its members are the preferred auction professionals used in the marketplace. Among those critical resources is the I-Series, and today's session will focus on and discuss a greatly important piece to the auction method of marketing. Our session on auction appraisals will be presented today by Tim Luke, who is absolutely one of the world's best appraisers and someone we are honored to say is a member of the National Auctioneers Association. Tim Luke has an extensive background in benefit auctions, fine and decorative arts, memorabilia, antiques, and collectibles. He was featured on HGTV's show Cash in the Attic and has participated on public television's Antique Road Show. He is president and co-owner of his own auction, event, and appraisal business, Treasure Quest Group Incorporated. Before becoming an independent consultant, he worked at Christie's Auction House in New York City as director of the collectibles department. Tim is also the author of two books on the history and background of collecting. He is an active member of the National Auctioneers Association, achieving the designation of Master Personal Property Appraiser. He is an instructor for the NAA's Graduate Personal Property Appraisal Program and is an AQB certified Youth PAP instructor as well. He has appeared as an expert on the Today Show, The View, Oprah, Good Morning America, CBS This Morning, Strange Inheritance, CNN, and Lifetime Television. Because of all of that experience, and really just because who he is, we are extremely honored that Tim is able to present to you today. Before he begins, please note that you may submit questions at any time during the presentation. These questions will be, then be asked during our brief Q&A period following the conclusion of today's presentation. You can take part in that conversation by typing your question and submitting it. A little later, we'll also ask that you take part in a very short three-question poll toward the end as well. With that, we are extremely pleased to hand things over. So, Tim, the floor is yours. Ah, oh, Curtis, thank you very much, and I'd just like to welcome everyone. I'm glad that there is an interest on the appraisal side of our auction business. <clears throat> and a few things just before we really dive into this is that because this is a limited time period, we're talking in broad strokes and highlights of what it takes to be an appraiser as an auctioneer. Um, I'm basing this on my 25 years of experience in doing this, and just to let you know, we cover in seven days through GPPA and the USPAP class, I'm not going to be able to get into everything in about 15, 20 minutes, but I'm going to give you some great tips on not only the auction and appraisal methods, but also how to get your appraisal business going. So with that, we'll go to the next slide. <clears throat> Today we're talking and focusing on tangible personal property. Now, appraisals can be done for real estate. They can also be done for intangibles, such as patents, intellectual property, those sort of things. But we are focusing on tangible personal property. Next slide, please. And those things we feature are fine and decorative arts, collectibles, memorabilia, uh, machinery and equipment residential contents. These are all things that we come in contact with as auctioneers, but also as appraisers, people sometimes need to know the value of these items for a variety of different purposes. Next slide, please. This, when you set up an appraisal practice, equals additional revenue stream for your overall business, which is really important. Uh, Setting up an appraisal practice can really add to your company's bottom line at the end of the year, but knowing how to do appraisals really will set you apart in the marketplace. Next slide, please. The big thing with appraisals, <laughs> it's the five Ds, death, 
debt, divorce, downsizing, and of course damage. Uh, what this all equals is in the death appraisals, that's estate, whether it's estate tax or the division of the personal property amongst the heirs. The debt could be financing or refinancing refinancing of machinery and equipment and the different things that go along with just trying to get out of debt and selling items. Divorce, it's the division of marital assets and clients will need an appraisal that will allow the judge to help do an equitable distribution. Uh, downsizing, uh, especially where I live here in South Florida, a lot of people may be moving into assisted living. So they're downsizing from a larger home into just a smaller, maybe one bedroom, and they need to have an appraisal on what these items are worth or have them insured, which leads us to the next one, which is damage. Um, all of these as auction, all of these things apply to us as auctioneers. However, the difference for appraisers, next slide please, and I'll give you the differences here. As auctioneers, we estimate values. Is basically we look at items, we do an estimate on what we think that it would bring at auction. Uh, our main job is to provide these auction estimates to our clients, so not only do they get an idea of what it might bring at an auction, but of marketing and how they could sell it and what's going to be the best way the best way to sell it. Auctioneers also, I believe, in my opinion, make very good appraisers because they have direct market experience. They've bought, sold, uh, consigned, they've dealt in the marketplace and know what these things sell for. And our big thing as auctioneers, we provide a valuation service. A lot of times clients will come to us as auctioneers and say, well, what is this worth? We are providing a valuation, not an appraisal. There's a big distinction. And we could say, well, in my opinion, I've seen this and it brought this at my auction, so I would estimate it if you were going to sell it as this three to five hundred dollars. That's what an auctioneer does. Next slide, please. Appraisers, on the other hand, provide an opinion of value in a manner that is independent, impartial, and objective which is based on a specific definition of value. And that definition could be fair market value or market value or replacement value. or th There's a, a variety of different value definitions, but that is what your goal is to do, is to provide a value opinion based on this value definition. It is also related to a scope of work. And what that means, it's, it's your assignment. It's the who, what, where, when, and why you're doing this appraisal. It's putting that in your report is vital and actually required uh, by USPAP, but it is something that really sets the tone for the entire appraisal, and that must be in there. That is a very important aspect of an appraisal report. Next, all of the values are justified by uh, comparable market research and analysis. And appraisers, it's part of a, their valuation service, but you are acting as an appraiser, which makes it your appraisal practice. And that really is the difference between the appraiser and the auctioneer. Next slide, please. So building your appraisal practice, how do I get started and what do I need? Here are some of the building blocks. Next slide, please. Specialized asset knowledge, whether it's machinery and equipment, residential contents, antiques, collectibles, painting, silver, jewelry, etc. It's so vast. Because it is so vast, it is so important that appraisers have specialized asset knowledge to understand all of the intricacies of what goes on in the marketplace. Next slide, please. The next step is training in professional appraisal standards. And I mentioned this earlier, USPAP, the Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice. This, these are the standards that we do as professional Appraisers, these are the standards that we use and we must follow, and there are specific standards established for personal property appraisers. Next slide, please. The ability to analyze the marketplace and the appraisal 
report writing skills. This is all covered in the graduate personal property appraiser class, which I'm an instructor along with my colleague, Rich Shore. We have retooled the entire GPPA program. So if you haven't taken that class in the last couple of years, it has been totally retooled. And this is the area where a lot of auctioneers who want to add appraisal practice to their business need the skills that we go over in this class. It's an intense, hands-on, we talk about methodology and all sorts of practices. So I would highly recommend that if you haven't taken it, or if you are a GPPA, to audit the new class. So that would be really beneficial to your appraisal practice. Next slide, please. The GPPA class goes over appraisal methodology, as I said, and how to determine values, the factors that affect values that make a big difference. Also the appraisal standards, a report writing skills, and I think this is so important because it makes a big difference on how you convey your opinion to value, whether it's for IRS purposes, whether it's to a court or an attorney, all of these things really will add credibility to your skill set as a professional auctioneer. Uh, the elements of an appraisal report, we go through that in the GPPA PA class on what belongs in the report as opposed to what belongs in your work file. Uh, creating a defensible USPAP and IRS compliant appraisal report, we go over those things as well as business practices, contracts, forms, and of course the NAA has the appraisal manager which is a cloud-based uh, appraisal management system for appraisal reports. So we go over all of that. Next slide, please. Appraisals consists of two different parts. Next slide. First is the development. And this, this includes your scope of work, the who, what, where, when, why, why, and how you've arrived at the value that you did. Your approach to value, the market analysis, the factors that affect value, the asset value characteristics, the condition, the measurements, all of these things, the value definitions, and this is all covered under the USPAP standard 7. Next slide, please. The second part of an appraisal and the way that you put it together, you have the development and then you have the communication, which is the actual report itself. And this could be either verbal or written, and I will tell you mostly it is a written, I've, I've never really done a verbal because you have to go through the same things and it's much easier to put everything in writing. In the communication, you must also include the client, intended users, effective dates, uh, clearly, accurately, and not misleading in your report so that you really detail and summarize the information that was an analyzed and the appraisal methods and techniques employed to support your value conclusions. Also, what you need to include are extraordinary assumptions, any hypothetical conditions, limiting conditions, and all of the things included, the signed certifications in USPAP Standard Rule 8.3. Next slide, please. If all of these things, if you're not familiar with any of these words, like extraordinary assumptions and scope of work, I highly recommend that you take the GPPA class and also the USPAP class. And I've listed here when these classes are being offered. So we've got the USPAP class that will take place in Texas, both the 15-hour, which is the two-day, or the seven-hour update, which you must take every two years. And USPAP updates every two years on the even years, and it will be updating again in 2016, but that'll be July 14th. And the appraisal manager, I will be giving a... Tim's tips on how to use the appraisal manager July 16th during conference and show. USPAP and GPPA will be offered in Las Vegas December 6th through the 12th. So they're great opportunities that you can take if you want to add this to your wealth of, of experience that you do as an auctioneer, add the appraisal business. Next slide, please. And just to review so that we understand what you need to do as an appraiser and auctioneer, first of all, if you are an appraiser acting as an auctioneer, you're doing a valuation service. But if you are an appraiser 
acting as an appraiser, you or if you are an auctioneer acting as an appraiser, I get myself confused here, sorry. If you are doing appraisals, you are acting as an appraiser, and you must clarify that to your client so that they understand that you're not an auctioneer just giving an auction estimate, that you're acting as an appraiser that is giving them an appraisal. So you are acting as an appraiser. You're doing this independently, impartially, and objective that you're using your specialized knowledge and if you don't have the knowledge you should pass the appraisal on to somebody else or gain the knowledge. You can do that. Appraisal report writing skills are very important. Remember there are two parts to an appraisal, the development and the communication of the appraisal report and of course it is so important and this is why I love being a part of NAA is the continuing education opportunities that you have out there, whether you audit a class or take the different classes and seminars offered at conference and show, these I series are phenomenal because you get to gain insight and education so that you can be a better professional, whether it's in your auction business or your appraisal business. So, next slide. All of that is kind of in a nutshell what we do as appraisers, and you can see there's an awful lot that goes into it. It's much more than just looking at a piece and saying, oh yeah, I think that's worth 20 bucks. Uh, you may see that on Antiques Roadshow or other television shows that do these mock appraisals or very quick off-the-cuff appraisals. They're really not appraisals. They're really valuations, and what you don't see off-camera is that they've done an awful lot of research and they're really just reiterating that research but it really becomes a valuation and not an appraisal. If you know the difference between those two things, you're already halfway there because most people don't. So I want to thank you. Do people have any questions? They do. Uh, we've had several questions come in. We'll get to those here in just a second, Tim. Thanks so much for your insight and knowledge that, that, uh, as, as we listen to that presentation. I, uh, we did. We will now open the floor to the iSeries attendees who have questions based on Tim's information. If you haven't done so already, you can submit your question. We'll do our best to get to as many of them as we can. Uh, first question, Tim, is is managing expectations, and I know that's a big question across the entire industry for anyone. But really, especially you know, this is at the very forefront. You know, folks who come in, sellers who come in, that that maybe mistake sentiment value versus true market value. Yes, and this is why the development side of an appraisal is so important, that research and analysis. What I always tell any client that I'm working with is the numbers do not lie. So when I research and find comparable items and what they have sold for, I will show them the multiple items that have sold in the 200, 250, 275, 175, 200. If they have an expectation that this is a $5,000 piece, I'll immediately say, well, I don't know where you got that information. Maybe it was $5,000 20 years ago, but today the markets have changed. And with the volatility in our marketplace, things are changing rapidly. And what used to sell for $10,000 maybe 20 years ago, today might be out of fashion and is selling for a fraction and maybe $1,000. So getting that sort of analysis down is vital to your appraisal business so that you can manage those expectations. Sure, and another question that's come in now, what are, what are some ideas for trying to generate new business? Or maybe, and I'll go even a little bit further than that, you know, the potential of appraisal skills is, is maybe being an, a standalone or, or an independent part of, of a, as, as a revenue generator within your auction business. Sure, sure. And I think the one way, so as auctioneers, we're selling things to clients all the time. And I've, I've consulted with several auction companies that's, that I've told them, I said, you have a number of people that have purchased, if they've purchased valuable items, well, you've already got a built-in database of clients that you can send a letter to saying, hey, if you've got items that you've purchased at my auction or other auctions that you're going to need an insurance appraisal on, I, we've started an appraisal division of our business. We would love to be able to help you out. Um, also, you could send another mailing and just, just, to, just to let people know that you are doing the appraisal business and, you know, <laughs> there's a 50% divorce rate in this country, so you can mention that you're doing not only insurance appraisals, divorce appraisals, IRS estate appraisals, or donation appraisals. There are so many different types of appraisals that your clients may need who are purchasing at your auction 
let them know. They might not even know that you have a separate appraisal division of your auction business. So that's one way. The other way is to also uh, have a great relationship with local attorneys, trust officers, bankers, uh, accountants. They are always looking for uh, qualified appraisals who know how to write qualified appraisal or qualified appraisers who know how to write qualified appraisals. That's very important. So those are just some ideas and in the GPPA class we do go over a variety of ways that you can generate business in your class uh, for your business. Perfect. And we've got a couple of we've got time here for a few more questions. Another one that just came in. Uh, where you mentioned comparables. Where where are mm -hmm. good places to go or what might maybe some resources be that that folks could do to go to get those comparables? Sure. And this is a great question. And when when I teach the class especially in a room full of auctioneers, this may sound scandalous, but I'm going to say it is that Auction is not the only market out there. You can actually look at different markets. There are the high-end consignment markets. There are the uh, retail market. And so depending on what your scope of work is and what you're looking for and what your asset is and where it's typically sold, I mean, sometimes cars in an estate, maybe the car's only two or three years old, where is that typically sold? That could be through classifieds or through other means, not just auction. So some of the places that I look at would be the uh, live auctioneers or some platform that generates uh, a variety of different auction sales from a variety of auctioneers from around the country. But then I also look, depending on the asset, I will look at uh, retail websites or I will look at classifieds or I make sure that I go to our local high-end consignment shop and some of the thrift stores in our area just I'll do that once maybe once or twice every other month or something just to see where the values are and I know a number of these people I introduce myself so that if I come across a piece of reg residential furniture and think huh, that would be a great piece for consignment. Auction, it's not going to bring a whole lot. What would that bring? And I could call somebody or tap somebody and see that. So there's a variety of different marketplaces that you can go to. And the other great thing, especially when we go to conference and show, network. Talk to the network of people that are doing appraisals and ask them, where do you find some comparables for this or for that? And, I'll, and what I love about NAA and I love about auctioneers, they love to share information and I'm sure a lot of people will do that. Sure. And we've got one we got time for one more question here. And it's it's a biggie, but we'll we'll try to get it in here. Okay. Uh, we, we talked about uh, the ability to offer appraisal as a service. And then we talked about wearing your hat as an auction professional. And you mentioned how important it was to be able to communicate the difference to your client mm -hmm. or to the public. But how still do you communicate or how do you deal with that potential conflict of interest that, that may come up as you're trying to do both roles? Sure, and that's a very good point. So uh, the way that we've addressed it, and I'll tell you what, what, um, what Greg and I did for our company, uh, Treasure Quest Group, we rebranded our company and made Treasure Quest Group Inc. our main S Corp. And then we created DBAs, Treasure Quest Appraisals, Treasure Quest Auctions, and Treasure Quest Events. And we branded those all three separately. We have separate letterhead for each, separate business cards for each. Uh, at, when we're acting as an appraiser, we use the Treasure Quest appraisals, information, contract, all of that with that Treasure Quest appraisals letterhead. When we are acting as an auctioneer, and we may have, a, have somebody, especially down here in South Florida, one of the heirs, they want us to just do a walkthrough and give a valuation of what this stuff might bring if they liquidated it. I've put together a valuation form and I make the client sign it. It is under my auction heading because it's an, I'm acting as an auctioneer. And I'm just saying if you liquidate this, eh, you're looking at this. And we go in with our iPads. We will say, hey, um, I'll do a little research, but look, this is what these things are bringing. You may do better at a high-end consignment shop, but always remember it's a 50% commission there or there's an, whatever it is. But acting as an auctioneer, I've put together a valuation form. I make them sign and I let, the, and on that form, it makes it very clear this is not an appraisal. 
This is a valuation. I'm acting as an auctioneer. So the more that you can clarify that to your client, the better. And I felt that it just made it much easier if we go in with that letterhead, with that card that says we're appraisers, we're doing an appraisal, or we're here in the capacity as an auctioneer to give you a valuation. Perfect. Okay, everyone, that wraps up today's Q&A portion of today's event. We thank you for everyone who submitted questions. We apologize if we didn't get to yours. The good news is we've collected all of the questions. We can forward those to Tim, and he, is, he has the opportunity to answer those uh, through email. We can do so later. Uh, it's now time for you to give us your feedback on today's session. So we're going to pull up some poll questions here for you, and we appreciate if you would uh, answer them fairly quickly. We've got to move through those uh, reasonably fast. We've only got a few minutes here left today in today's session. Uh, your first question of three, uh, I've learned something here today that I plan to use the next time I do an appraisal. And those answers then will be yes or no. Uh, we'll give you about 10 seconds here to uh, just quickly give, you, give us your feedback. And while you're doing so, we'll thank you for taking part in today's survey. A couple of seconds. Okay, and that'll do number one. Number two, on a scale of one to five, with five being the highest score and one being the lowest score, how would you rate today's I-Series presentation? Again, number five is the highest, number one is the lowest, and we'll give you just a few seconds to answer that. Okay, and question number three, your final question. I would like to learn more on why the GPPA designation will benefit my business or my appraisal skills. It's a yes, no, or already have it answers. Uh, again, I would like to learn more on why the GPPA designation will benefit my business or my general auction or appraisal services. We'll give you just a few seconds to answer that as well. Okay, and that'll do it for the survey. Again, we thank Tim Luke for his insight and knowledge and, and willing, uh, willingness to answer the Q, uh, do the Q&A at the end there as well. Before we end today's session, would you please note that you can build off what you heard from Tim in today's iSeries. For more information about the GPPA, MPPA, or USPAP programs, please contact Carrie Boydston in the NAA office. Her phone number is 913-563-5432. 913-563-5432, and again, that's contacting Carrie Boydston on more information for the GPPA, MPPA, and USPAP programs. A couple of quick closing items. You'll get a replay of today's session through an emailed link by the end of this week, uh, and if you've missed any previous iSeries sessions, those will be available or are available at auctioneers.org backslash NAA-education. I'll say that one more time, auctioneers.org backslash NAA dash education. And that's for any of the iSeries presentations that we've done in the past. You will need to be logged in to access those. Those are available to NAA members only. And a quick note that our next iSeries webinar will be Wednesday, September 2nd, and we'll be focused in on benefit auctions. And we will send you more information on that in the near future, but go ahead and get that on your schedule Wednesday, September 2nd on benefit auctions. That's going to wrap it up for today's session. We thank you again for taking part in today's NAA I-Series. It does conclude everything for today. We again thank you one more time. And remember that the NAA I-Series exists because it's all about you and your business successes. So thank you again for participating, and we'll talk to you next time.